Good morning, new 1%. It's Satoshi Boomin coming at you with another video. Guys, we're talking about Cardano. Leave a like down below. Hit that subscribe button for me. And let's get this show started. I got my hot tea and honey locked and loaded. Ready to go. Let's talk about Cardano. So, taking a look at the price, guys. Not really much to talk about here. Just kind of moving sideways. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, really just moving sideways here. Um, not really much to talk about when it comes to the price, to be honest. Just waiting for Alonzo Harfork. A lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. I sound like a broken record, so we're just going to move on. And we've got Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, featured on Yahoo Finance. Absolutely crazy, guys. We're going to watch this video, the whole video. Um, it's amazing. It's about seven minutes long, I believe. I don't know how long this clip is. I think this clip is about seven minutes long. I'm going to take a look at it. We're going to talk about it and then get on with the news. So, And then I like what Tim Harrison posted here. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then they spell your name wrong. <laughs> then you win. And we know that. We know that from everything that, you know, we've been fed in crypto. They hate you first. They ignore you first. They laugh at you. Then they hate you. They fight you. And then they end up buying at the top. So we already know that, guys. Let's take a look at this beautiful um, interview. I think it's worth sharing the whole thing. If you don't want me to share the whole thing, there will be timestamps that you can skip ahead if you're interested so let's listen
also, can you do that with identity clients? Can you do that with metadata? Can you do that with automated regulation? These types of things. There's a lot of missing pieces. And when you do that at a scale for billions of people, if you do that with some notion of governance that doesn't require a custodial entity to always be around to care of that. We're used to custodial entities. You have Microsoft with Windows, you have Apple to the iPhone and so forth. And you always say, okay, they're the guys who are going to get the next version out. But when we strip away that centralized curator, who's going to make it more persistent? Who's going to do the next big innovation? Who's going to make sure it's interoperable with some big legacy payment system or the BIS or something that we've seen with the CDs? So our model was really built to be holistic in that respect. For smart contracts, we're almost at a higher uh, rollout. Uh, we started with central with metadata, and that allowed us to bring identity to the blockchain. We've already started deploying those systems in Georgia, in Kenya, in Georgia, and in Ethiopia with five different stewards. The next major milestone is the ability to issue assets to the platform. We've seen the largest adoption there for NFTs, a lot of NFT platforms coming in. And the final rollout will be programmability. So that's smart contracts. And that's imminent in the platforms. In the next 90 days, we should see a lot of beta testing. And then it's just a question of what's the best time to do that for all the people who use it. Just to return to your point on, um, on the heat killer uh, kind of clarification there, it is interesting because as they shift to proof of stake, uh, it's, I mean, you can make the argument that it could be a Cardano killer. That was the, the sustainability in that aspect of it was kind of how you guys differentiated. Uh, and obviously, if it takes longer for smart contracts as opposed to come out, if you say the next uh, 90 days. I, I don't feel that way. I mean, we were always with the mantra of scalability, interoperability, and sustainability. And so, yeah, sure, proof of stake was great. And we're leading that fight. We were first to market with the proof of stake, but the Ethereum just still have trouble. But that's only one part of the agenda. That's just saying we have a better engine. Engine doesn't make a BMW or a BMW. It's a part of it, but you need the whole ecosystem, the whole collection of things. And one of the big things that F2 has bowed out on is governance. It's not clear how you evolve and update the system uh, after the founders retire or lose prominence. And the bigger the systems get, the slower they, they evolve. Look at Bitcoin. You have these Bitcoin core developers who desperately want to evolve the system and add smart contracts and side chains and new cryptographic primitives and so forth. They just can't get it done. Even though they all agree it's a good idea and they need to do it for the marketplace to stay competitive, it's just such a big boat of cruise ships to move the whole wheel that doesn't move for a long time. And so Ethereum is suffering from that problem and they don't have an obvious on chain governance system. And that's not in the roadmap for F2, whereas it's a core part of the roadmap. The second part is interoperability. So Protocols like Cosmos and Polkadot and Cardano, as we make special permissions for side chains, Ethereum really doesn't find itself super well in its current instantiation and uh, cost effective way. F2, they kind of have an idea of it, but it's still not clear how that model is going to work, especially when you have airplane permission permissionless systems. So they're very different, actually, when you look at the hood. Even if they were the same, there's different user bases. We're bringing millions of people in Africa that simply Ethereum doesn't seem to care about. And we run into those guys or consensus or other people outside of South Africa and a few well developed places in Africa. So we have different technologies, we have different philosophy, we have different user bases and different time horizons and so forth. And also very different accounting models. Uh, UTXO is a significantly more scalable model because uh, it's got local state instead of global state compared to what Ethereum is proposing. And that's another reason they're having so much difficulty sharding themselves, whereas it's built in by design for our system. So I think we'll be a leader for micropayments, we'll be a leader for what we actually have to shard. We can scale at much higher levels, but we also have governance to simply go. So I feel I feel better about it. But again, you know, everybody And again, guys, uh, that was an amazing interview. Some juicy stuff. Uh, future collaboration with Mark Cuban, awesome. And number two, again, guys, you know, sustainability aside, governance is key. And nobody talks about governance when they talk about crypto. That's the afterthought. Uh, the fact that you can have a fork of a fork of a fork of a fork in crypto is kind of ridiculous. Um, the fact that in order to, you know, change or to upgrade systems is very, very hard and very, very... It could be very damaging to the ecosystem. Nobody talks about this stuff, but Cardano has solved that. With the hard fork combinator events, guys, they have major hard fork, major updates. And guess what? It's like nothing happened. The Shelly update, moving from Shelly to Byron, that is a monumental step from going to a federated system to a proof of stake system, a fully decentralized system. And all it was was an update, a simple update. It didn't take down 
Cardano. Cardano didn't get shut down. Cardano didn't dip. The gas fees didn't spike. These hard fork combinator events and this governance system that IOHK has built is something that is slept on, extremely slept on. And, you know, it's just a lot of stuff that's slept on when it comes to Cardano. Great science, uh, sustainability, like you said, being able to run a whole financial operating system on a Raspberry Pi. Guys, we're on the ground floor of something amazing. We're on the ground floor of something groundbreaking. And I'm so happy. I'm so lucky to be a part of it. And I'm lucky to be a part of such a great community, like with each and every one of you guys and doing this together. I feel lucky in a way that I was born in this era and are, is able to experience something like this. So that was awesome. Again, guys, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to go ahead and skip that. Moving on. So. In some, <laughs> first they ignore you, then they fight you, then you win news. Billionaire Carl Icken says he may drop up to $1.5 billion in crypto. Hmm, noting that much of the cryptocurrency issued today will not survive. Now, this gentleman here is a very big skeptic of Bic of crypto, and he's he's always talked mess about crypto. Every way, every time he get a chance to, he talks mess about crypto. Former crypto skeptic Carl Ikan, founder of Ikan Enterprises, told Bloomberg he's set to enter the crypto market in a big way. Speaking on Wednesday, Ikan explained how he's considering a large investment and that entering the market in such a manner would not be to buy a few coins or something. I mean, a big way for us would be a billion dollars, a billion and a half dollars. I'm not going to say exactly. He joins a growing list of fellow billionaires who have changed their tune of, on crypto in the past 12 months. When asked what cryptocurrencies he has his eyes on, the billionaire kept his cards close to the chest and emphasized that much cryptocurrency issued today will not survive, but we believe cryptocurrency in one form or another might be here to stay. To be clear, we have never bought any cryptocurrency. We are studying it. Why are you studying it, sir? That, that, that. That tells me, that leads me to believe that you, sir, have already bought crypto. And that leads me to believe that you already have a position in crypto. When they say that we haven't bought any, you don't listen to a billionaire. You don't listen to what a billionaire says. You listen to what they say <laughs> 10 months from now. Okay? There was a story that just broke, actually, um, that BlackRock was getting into crypto. They were like, yes, we haven't bought any crypto yet, quote unquote. But then there was an article a couple months ago, I wanna say about six months ago, that BlackRock was getting into crypto. So if there was an article six months ago that they were getting into crypto and a new article to yesterday that's saying they're getting into crypto, don't you think that that means that they have already gotten into crypto? When these billionaires start talking about it and start talking about their investments, they've already done it, guys. They've already done it. Billionaires aren't going to give you the game like that, all right? That's how they became billionaires. They got in on the ground floor. They got in when nobody wanted it, when nobody was talking about it, and they hold. That's it. Ikan Enterprises is a $14.5 billion American conglomerate with investments in CVR, Pet Boys, Trump Entertainment Resorts. And then here's the short blurb. We'll, we'll take a listen. Well, I thought it was a short blurb. Well.
And all that is just to say that this man has bought crypto. He's been bought it. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's doing. Listen to what his company is doing. He's probably already bought Bitcoin. He's probably bought already bought cryptos. Guys, when these guys, <laughs> I keep telling you, first they ignore you. Then they fight, then they laugh at you, talk all kind of best, talk about, remember Jamie Dimon talking about, oh, Bitcoin's going to zero, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's rat poison square. That's what uh, Warren Buffett said. But these guys, man, they say all that stuff and then they hop on the train. They buy at the top. That's why I always say, guys, trolls and all these people, it's okay. They're going to buy at the top. We already know this. So... This Carl Icken is a Bitcoin holder. We already know that. <laughs> and uh, look, 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 if Carl Icken has not, hasn't already bought a billion dollars worth of ETH and Bitcoin, why would he announce he's about to buy a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum? He's already done it. He's already done it, guys. At the end of the day, you know, the the point is is that these people the people who talk the most mess the people who are the most feverishly against it typically they actually like it I'm, I'm gonna probably get demonetized by telling this story though but i'll tell it anyway i don't care so i'll say it anyway there was a <laughs> a study done about homophobes okay people who are not afraid of homosexuality or homosexual people, but who don't like them. And there was a study done that the loudest people who were vehemently against homosexuality and all that stuff, they were taken to do a study. And they put sensors on their private areas and I think on their brain or whatever. And they showed them homosexual pornographic imagery. Now, please cover your ears if there's children watching i guess i'm sorry but your kids are probably gonna know about that stuff eventually anyway and guess what the people who are the loudest the people who are the most vehemently against homosexuality the people who wanted to beat them up and hurt people who are who are different than them guess what they had the biggest reactions to the images that were homosexual they were the, they were the most aroused why do I bring this up? Is because when somebody hates something so much, when somebody is against something so much, whether it be, you know, social issues or crypto, you have to utter, you have to really think about why do they hate it? Why are they so vehemently against it? Do they secretly want it? Do they secretly like it? And that's why when we hear all these maxis talk down on crypto, talk down on you know, what we're trying to do, talk down on Cardano, do they secretly know that it's going to eat their lunch and they're afraid? They're afraid that since they've been down with Ethereum, down with Cumcoin or whatever else coin out there, that if they turn their back on it or they say something good about Cardano, that it will invalidate Ethereum? It could be. It could actually be, guys. So we got to look out for that. Um, he says, well, uh, he, and he goes on to say, you know, talking about crypto and the U.S. dollar. So, again, guys, the people who shout the, the, the hardest, the people who are the loudest, the people who are so vehemently against something, we have to check them. Because at the end of the day, that saying, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win, that sh is so true, bro. It's so true. All right, moving on. All right, guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. This is Marlo here, guys. Now, Marlo slept on. Ain't nobody talking about Marlo at all. Everybody's talking about the ERC-20 converter, which is great. But Marlo is the game changer, guys. This will allow anybody to create financial contracts. Anybody. People who are, you know, developers to people like you and me. This is amazing. And nobody's talking about this. This is an easy, simple way. Well, I wouldn't say easy or simple. It's still kind of hard to make a smart contract. But this is a low-code way 
in order for ev- anybody to make smart contracts. With Marlowe, we aim to demonet- democratize finance by facilitating peer-to-peer agreements that run on the blockchain. We seek to empower people and create their own financial instruments and set up agreements with anyone with whom they want to interact. Marlowe will offer a suite of products, each product serving a different function to a set of users. Marlowe's overreaching pro- overarching product strategy comprises of three streams, Marlowe for the developers, Marlowe for end users, and Marlowe for in- enterprise. This is kind of like Toolchain, guys. If you watch my VChain videos, Toolchain is a system to where you can have normal people coding on it, you can have developers coding on it, and you can have enterprise engineers coding on it, and there's different levels of code. So like, let's just say you're a regular business analyst, and you're not a developer, but you still need smart contracts. There's a low code version that you can set up smart contracts. If you're a little bit if you're a little bit more advanced and you work for a big enterprise, there's an enterprise solution. And obviously, if you're a developer, you have the full suite. So this is a way that again will allow people to create smart contracts no matter what level of code you are. Now obviously, you know, you need a little bit of knowledge on on smart contracts to do it, but it's explained in non-technical language and each action is performed with the user's explicit authorization. Our team has built a suite of rigorously tested and verified financial tools, including escrows, debt securities, and swaps that can be used on the Marlowe run. These and many, many more verified open source contracts are made available through the Marlowe library. And that's just for end users. Obviously, they have Marlowe Build and Marlowe Play. The Marlowe Playground, that's for developers. That's a bit more advanced. And then lastly, they have uh, Marlowe for Enterprise. And they aim to expand DeFi beyond individual users, helping enterprise access the tangible benefits of smart contracts. And then down here, they rolled out Marlowe Playground. It's pretty awesome. And as a part of the Golgan rollout, we are now in process of completing the implementation of Marlowe on Cardano, giving users and organizations the opportunity to execute DeFi contracts they have written themselves or downloaded from a contract repository. Marlowe will run first on all the Cardano blockchain, but it is blockchain agnostic, so you can run in, on other blockchains to reach an even broader audience in the future. And then uh, what's next real quick? Marlowe for end users will come online in stages throughout 2021. First, the prototype of Marlowe Run, where users can demo and try out their own financial agreements. This will be a suite of financial smart contract templates that users can customize to their needs. This prototype will allow users to explore the experience of making financial agreements in a decentralized fashion, all in a peer-to-peer manner without requiring value extracting third party. And then it goes on to say you don't need to use any real tokens, so you could try the demo before doing it. And then we'll share a demo of Marlowe Run. Today, I totally forgot. Today is the Cardano 360 event. Wow. That is a uh, <laughs> bad Satoshi movie. Bad. You should have known that. Bad. I gave myself a little spanking for that. I'm sorry, guys. Today is the Cardano 360 event. I'm so excited for it. I cannot wait. We're going to be watching that today. Um, We are planning a series on webinars on decentralized finance with Marlo starting June 3rd. And you can register on the website for these webinars now. Slept on. Slept on. Slept on. Ain't nobody talking about it, but that's okay. We're going to profit off of it. You feel me? Moving on. Last but not least, guys, I know I kept you here long. IOHK is hiring. They're hiring a community manager at Project Catalyst. I might apply to that. Actually, I am going to apply to that. So, and then down here, if you guys are interested in working for IO Global, they have lots of jobs available, guys. So they have community managers, Haskell software engineers, data analysts, business analysts, product strategy directors, All stuff that I am not qualified for. (laughs) But I am qualified for the community manager position. I think I might just... I think I might do that, actually. Because uh, I would love to to work for IO Global. 
Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, I love each and every one of you. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to our wonderful sponsor, Ada Coins, ticker symbol C O I N Z, guys. Please consider delegating to these guys. They're a small stake pool operator. We only have small stake pool operators on our channel here, guys. And it's important that you stake to them. It's important that you stake to small stake pool operators. Guys, this, oper this stake pool is ran by AWS Architect. So he knows how to run a stake pool. He knows how to maintain it. And the proceeds will be going... A lot of the proceeds will be going to helping inner city kids in Los Angeles learn about Car Cardano, learn about blockchain technology, and learn how they can help um, these kids. 1% margin, guys, I, I would delegate. Please, we need to get these numbers up, um, and we can't do it without you. So please consider delegating. We only do small stake pools on this channel uh, for the decentralization of the Cardano blockchain. So hit them up, ticker symbol C-O-I-N-Z, Ada Coins. Here's the pool ID as well. I'm going to put this information in the description below. Make sure, guys, that you have the correct pool ID. Don't join anybody else's uh, pool because sometimes there's copycats, all right, guys? So just remember uh, the, the pool ID. Make sure you match that up. All right, guys. I'd like to give a shout out to our wonderful Patreon subscribers: AJ Bear, Garlic House, Mike Harris, Sergio Lassinos, and the Fernline Jeffrey, Ethan, America Home Remedies dot com, Maryland for Crypto Boost, Wayne Fruz, Dan Brady, Adams, Joe Menes, Kyle Bach, Crypto SVT, Si, Eric Para, I did the voice for the people HBD South Bay dot com, Ryan Ingram, Daniel A, Crypto Kim Charles, Climax ZH, Angela Schroyer, Craig Wadding, C Vale, Maker Dow Crumbs, Bearder, Leon Jackson, Jacob Connor, and Michael Green. Thank you so much, guys, for your wonderful Patreon support. Don't let your memes be dreams, guys. I will talk to you tomorrow with the Cardano 360 updates and the VeChain updates. You don't want to miss them. Hit me up on Twitter, guys. I love each and every one of you. Don't let your memes be dreams, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Have a great day.